Greetings, this is Christopher Long, and welcome to Conversations, my super sweet interview series that finds me chatting with some of the most fascinating people on today's pop culture scene. In this gonzo-sized installment, I'm hanging with the legendary Motor City madman, Ted Nugent. Our arranged 20-minute interview rocked and rolled into more than 30 minutes as we discuss Ted's new album, Detroit Muscle, his early music influences, and his commitment to living sober. Better grab your dancing shoes, kids, because we're a fixin' to do the Wango Tango. Ted Nugent. Full time, Christopher uh, Long. Uh, <laughs> it's what we do, baby. And, and back to you, Christopher. I mean, it's my honor to celebrate my music on behalf of my band, my crew, and real music lovers with new music. Thank you. There is a huge, huge army of, of good, good people out there across the globe that uh, stand with truth, logic, and common sense and celebrate real soulful music. So this is a great time for us in the world of treachery. <laughs> now, in a world of treachery, you, my friend, have a snappy new little record out, Detroit Muscle. Very exciting little rock and roll record. Your 16th studio set. Would you yeah. would you think that it would be an accurate assessment if I said that it reaches back far enough stylistically to feel familiar while leaning forward far enough to be fun and fresh? Ditto, 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 Christopher. Yes, I mean, because I I have one foot back in the aboriginal, original campfire with, with Erg, the original spear-throwing, warrior in the year four <laughs> i have one foot in that camp and i straddle chuck berry and bo diddley and little richard and jerry lee lewis and hollow wolf and muddy waters and bb king and freddie king and albert king and all the kings Motown. so i so i literally immerse myself in the primal scream the musicality of the primal scream by those heroes i just mentioned and an adventure, a forward adventure. The link, the yeah, they're 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 old school grinding rhythm and blues, Motown, Funk Brother, Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley licks, but they're they're mine. They're mine because my guitar neck has unlimited topography and magnificence, and I I'm on my guitar neck every day. And when you're surrounded with just unbelievably dedicated virtuosos like like Greg Smith and Jason Hartless. Yes, it's as old and primal as it can be, but it's also futuristic in its grind and its movements and its, its tonalities and, and lyrical fun and lyrical sincerity. So yeah, I'm, I'm hanging 10 on the surfboard of one hell of a wave of uh, forward motion. So thank you for identifying that. By the way, Christopher, you're not the first one to mention its, its uh, origination you know, back to the, the the founding fathers of Chuck Berry, etc. But it is, it's forward momentum, fun music, so thank you for that. This is Ted 22, you know. Um, yeah, I play my guitar every day, so, um, and that, but like I said, I don't think you've ever heard it put that way, and I don't think anybody's ever put it this way, but I know all your favorite guitar players approach the guitar neck as, as, charted territory of, of familiarity so that we satisfy our earliest musical urges but also it's Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea and they're not even sure there is a Northwest Passage but we're going to look for it anyway so your favorite guitar players I don't care if they're Billy Gibbons or uh, Steve Vai or Joe Satriani um, no matter who it might be we're, we're seeking unknown territory and, and I think that's what you get when you hear a piece of music that gives you a primal grind and a groove and an upbeat uppityness but also hey that's a new lick how can we find a new lick on Les Paul's instrument in 2022 but hallelujah Christopher we do <laughs> speaking specifically to the record the title alone reflects a lot of your hometown pride and then the music, you break into that record, rip the shrink wrap off, put it on the turntable, and it reflects a lot of heartfelt American pride. How, uh, how 
conscious were you of uh, of getting that message across or getting those two messages across? Well, I don't want to get too deep because it is primal and instinctual and, and, and urgent and raw, none of which takes any thought. You with me? Sure. I'm tracking with you, dude. But but when you're when you're absolutely pure and raw, and I keep using the word primal, it keeps coming up, doesn't it? Sure. <laughs> when you when you approach life like that. Uh, and, and you know I'm a hunter. I, I, I kill my own food. I kill my own clothes. And I, I farm and I ranch and I, I revere the God's miraculous creation as a hands-on aborigine. So I, I, I am the only, hey, I'm the only really functioning primal guitar player that actually creates licks and songs with blood and guts in, in, in my my, my, not just in under my fingernails, but in my DNA. So when I sit sit down with the guitar, that Christopher, it, it, a lot of people might not understand this, but you do. There is no thought. It's 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 samurai. It's out of body. Um, I've I've said recently in interviews. I do them all the time. I love talking about my music. <laughs> but but what it causes me to do is to really challenge myself to accurately articulate the impetus and the joys and the the dreams and the, and the adventure and the frustrations and the good, the bad, and the ugly. But you identified that it touches a lot of bases. But all my, going back to the Amboy Dukes and the damn Yankees and all my solo stuff, there's always been high energy and tense crank masters on those records. But there's also been some soothing instrumentals, some soothing songs. You make me feel right at home on the Ted Nugent first solo album. That was a jazz song. I played a, 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 a a, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, White, Mr. White, the funk brother. I played a, played a, almost a West Montgomery tone on my Birdland. The point being is that, yes, I live and breathe my American dream. So you're going to get Detroit muscle that celebrates Detroit horsepower muscle and Detroit musical muscle. Yes, you're going to get an American campfire because I have an American campfire every few days of my life. And they're inspiring. And yes, you're going to get feedback dry fire because I need to sing a, a volatile love song to Mrs. Nugent that asks, tell me what you want, tell me what you need, tell me about your wildest dreams. Give me some feedback dry fire, tell me what all this means. And a, a leave the lights on that happened when I lost my beloved brother John two years ago. And Alaska, where I celebrate her magnificence, and I, I have a, a, a tear of blood at the abuse of irresponsible man and industry. And obviously you're, what you're really asking about is come and take it, a message to a corrupt criminal power abusing government that I live the Constitution. And if you abuse it, I will take you on. So, yes, that's quite a smorgasbord of emotions and sensations and, and middle fingers on fire and, and tears and, and all of the above. And that it represents my life. So when I sit down with the guitar, Christopher, it's like the samurai master told Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai when Tom was fuddling up the, the misdirection of his samurai sword. And the master said, too many minds. The best sex is without planning it. The best meal is in a kitchen or at a, a, a campfire with the basic ingredients and you follow your instincts. The best music surrounded by the best musicians like I've always been honored to be comes from the, the guts, the spirit, and the scrotum. So you're, you're going to get all of the above without any forethought whatsoever on my music. This record is entirely you, Greg Smith, and Jason Hartless. 100%. And those guys are my blood brothers of American musical grind. There's nothing they can't do. And I'm waiting for the journalist that really lives the music to celebrate the unbelievable virtuosos that have been at my side. The Amboy Dukes, Dave Paul,
Palmer and Gregor Rama? Are you kidding me? It's like Carmine Apathy and Tim Bogart or, or John Bottom and John Paul Jones or Tom Hamilton and Joey Kramer, and all of our favorite, uh, Dusty Hill and, and Frank Beard, all of our favorite music has this Motown funk brother, James Brown velocity and thump. And I have that, and I've had it for 60 years, Christopher. Yes, Greg and Jason, like Rob Grange and Cliff Davies. I remember those guys. Yeah, well, just think what, just think of the in, the inspiration at my side. Yeah. Throughout my musical life, I look to the heavens and I say, "Thank you, God. How did I deserve these guys? Because they've always been better than me, and they've made me better." Uh, not for nothing, but "State of Shock" was the soundtrack to every backseat romp I ever had in high school. Hallelujah. So there you go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, uh, one of the great things I think about us being older guys now in the world, uh, the the experiences that we've collected over the years, and as an old guy, uh, particularly listening to your newest record, I think I hear things that maybe a younger person is going to miss. Is it my imagination? Or is there a little bit of Chambers Brothers flavor in Leave the Lights On? I can't escape the bombardment of self-inflicted music throughout my last 70 years, and probably all 74 of them. But yes, we opened up for the Chambers Brothers at the uh, Fillmore East with Bill Graham and uh, Soft Machine and uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears and uh, Vanilla Fudge. And uh, said your Johnny Winter. I mean, I've 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 been in the ether of the greatest music that has ever lived. I've shared the stage with the greatest musical forces that have ever walked, and they've all imprinted on me. So you hear, it's like people ask me, "What influence you, Ted?" I go, "Well, everything from short skirts, short skirts to train wrecks, and all the music in between." So I I've, I've led uh, a, a very um, uh, immersed musical American dream pursuit and when I and because I've been clean and sober that's why I always emphasize that when you re revere your sacred gifts from God which is your sensuality your spirit, your emotions, your heart your body, when you respect that you pick up on your surroundings better and as a bow hunter, if I don't have a higher level of situational awareness, I'll have to buy chicken. I have to really dedicate myself to being an asset to the wind, an asset to the heartbeat of the earth. And when you approach your music with that bow hunting stealth, you pick up on every musical moment, whether it's over the radio or when I play bass guitar for Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley, Christopher, are you? Hitting me? You don't think that imprinted deep into my musical psyche. Uh, so I've, I've shared the stage with Brian May and Sammy Hager and Hart and Journey and, and Ronnie Montrose and, and Rick Derringer and I've been on stage with Errol Smith and I've been on stage with all, but Brian May and Eddie Van Halen. I've been on stage with with everybody and, and I because I'm clean and sober, nothing escapes me it all settles into my musical arsenal and i can call upon it holistically and accurately every time so you hear an amalgamation what a great word an amalgamation of my life's experience so you do you do hear the mystical flight of the arrow on thousands of game animals you do hear the jam with johnny and edgar winter you do hear the uh, lifted eyebrows when Shemaine steps out of the shower. You hear all that in my music. And uh, I, I don't think anybody you may ever interview will ever put it that way. But being clean and sober, I have a, a more complete arsenal than anybody that wasn't. As a word of encouragement and thanks to you, uh, I want to say that... Uh, as somebody that's been in, in the 
in this world we live in for, for decades and decades. I have been sober, completely clean and sober for 18 years. Now, the, the point to that is the inspiration I did not get from family, the inspiration I did not get from teachers or preachers, my inspiration to pursue total sobriety came from the school of Ted Nugent. Christopher, do you know how much that means to me? I, and by the way, if you follow my Facebook, I, I got the Instagram and all this other stuff, but I'm on Facebook numerous times, most days. I heard that story that brings me to tears of celebration and thanks from thousands of people. People have stopped me on the street forever to let them know that when they hear the mantra and the importance of my clean and sober life, that they were inspired to become clean and sober. And that I think God sent me to share that important message. And for people like you to pick up on it makes me a very happy, fulfilled man. We emulate or we try to emulate the people who we admire most, you know, and, and certainly I do. Yes. I was, you know, I was that kid, 14, 15 years old, seeing you on the weekend warriors tour, state of shock tour, you know, and as I had an opportunity to live some years and make some mistakes, you know, it's like, well, who's getting it right? Fucking Nugent. So I started pulling fewer pages from the book of Keith Richards and pull it, taking all my leads from the book of Ted Nugent. And, and that means so much to me. I spent a weekend with Keith Richards. He was one of my powerhouse heroes musically. He's so soulful, so creative, and he's a fine man. He's a, he, I spent the weekend with him at night, and he was 78 uh, uh, at Studio 54 of all places. Holy God. <laughs> and I love the man. You know how I so wanted to have a musical conversation with him, and he was so gone with the wind that there was no hope to have a meaningful conversation with him. Yeah. And I can say that about hundreds and hundreds of musical geniuses that I revered, that I just wanted to have a human to human moment and they were so drunk or so stoned that I couldn't, I'm not going to name any names Sure. but Christopher it would be easier for me to name the names that I have had meaningful conversations with, Sammy Hagar Ricky Medlock, all my musicians yeah. um, uh, Roger Daltrey one time we opened up for him, we opened up for the Amboy Dukes opened up for the Who at Southfield High School for a dance, a dance in the gymnasium. So I've had intimate time with the world's greatest musical forces, and rarely could they form a sentence. It was, it just broke my heart, which in, increasingly fortified my will, my determination to never poison myself so that I turned into that drooling, stumbling idiot. And it, it's, a, it's a shame. I don't mean to call anybody an idiot. No. But if you're, if you're doing that, I'm sorry, you're an idiot. No, what it is, Ted, you have provided so many people a personal testimony. And when we live, not only share our personal testimonies, but live those testimonies, you know, you're, you're an, an, an effective vehicle. So... Well, you know. thank you for that. I didn't set out to be, and it's not. It, it, I didn't know it was my calling, and I don't owe it to anybody, except I feel a debt to God that if I can bring quality of life or happiness to someone that I see um, shortchanged in that department, how if you see someone injured on the street, how do you walk by them? How do you ignore that injured person? You need to kneel down and assist that person. Beautiful. That's if biblical, too. tells me to mind my own business, I'm still going to help the person. That's 
That's right out of the Bible, brother. That's the story of the Good Samaritan right there. God bless you, Ted Nugent. Well, and you see, I didn't read that passage, but I, you and I know it instinctively. Yeah, you're of quoting. Course, you're... Of course we help out our fellow man. I, I represent a wonderful charity right now, Christopher, called FullCircleProgram.com. FullCircleProgram.com. It was inspired by a young man who had your story that Ted Nugent slugged him upside the head with the crowbar of truth, logic, and common sense, goodwill, decency, and love. And they saw that I was having way more fun than they were because I'm clean and sober and they're stumbling. And he created this charity to save Americans' lives from the insanity of substance abuse, fullcircleprogram.com. And because our government is orchestrating the fentanyl invasion through our southern border, killing our fellow Americans, we need to support fullcircleprogram.com that are saving these people from that deathly suicidal mistake that getting high could possibly be good for anybody, anywhere, anytime. All these important points you and I are talking about with nothing but a tsunami of love for quality of life and support for our fellow man, it's in the music, isn't it? Alaska, that is is one of the most, uh, I would say, bullet point pieces of work you've done, at least since Fred Bear. Is wow, it, is it wrong? You got a super sweet riff going on there that tastes a little bit like suspicious minds. Obviously, Elvis carried the baton of all the black musical authorities that influenced all the best music in the world. Elvis and, and Jerry Lee Lewis, they, their dream was to reach the mountaintop of soulfulness, emotion, and defiance of the black heroes who ripped off the shackles of slavery and created the most meaningful, impactful, important music in the history of the world. No white guys, I love Beethoven and Bach and Mozart, but no white guys, and yes, there is a color to this. I don't judge by color of skin, I judge by content of character, but the content of musical character from those original gospel and blues heartbroken blacks subjected to the worst crime of mankind, slavery, and the emotion of those songs dreaming of freedom, you can't escape that cry. And that's what Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis did, especially when Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley brought it into an uppityness and, and, and celebrating the final uh, ripping of the shackles of, of, of slavery. And they were, they were free and, and defiant. And that's what Little Richard, I mean, come on, any, name me something more defiant in the history of mankind than Rosa Parks and Little Richard. <laughs> so, so what Elvis captured was, and, and so does Billy Gibbons, and so does Stephen Tyler, so does Sammy Hagar, so does all of our favorite bands. They capture what Wilson Pickett, James Brown, and Motown delivered. And certainly Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters, Mose Alice, and Lightning Hopkins. Come on. That suspicious minds by this by this white guy that was so moved by the soulfulness of his black inspiration, which you're on the phone with that same guy right now, and all your favorite music has that influence. So yes, that it doesn't matter what genre it might come from, but when Elvis delivered such a soulfulness. That, that was when I was growing up. I first exposed to Elvis, what, 53? 1953, was he on Ed Sullivan? Something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm seven, I'm, what am I? I'm five years, five years old. <laughs> uh, whatever that year was, I was impacted because of the soulfulness that even a child could grasp and, and pursue. So that that's really what you're hearing throughout my music, going all the way back to the Amboy Dukes. You heard Chuck. Well, let's let's admit, I, I've never seen anybody really celebrate this adequately. The the British invasion. Well, on the first Stones and Beatles albums was a Chuck Berry song, a Bo Diddley song, a Little Richard song, and a Motown song. Come on, am I the only guy that celebrates that? And 
and it's not only passionate and soulful, it's a little dangerous. Yes, but what could be more dangerous than to find the, the horrific tradition of slavery? Yes. And even when the white guy got a hold of it, they could only shoot him from the waist up. It was so dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You think there might be a little sexuality in your favorite music? <laughs> my- well, speaking of that, just how about driving blind groove or the, the bass line that I created for Little Miss Dangerous, not to mention Stranglehold. But think of the sensuality. Um, uh, writing on the wall, uh, Tail Gunner on the Nugent album. Yes, I am. Obviously, I, I am a sensual being. And from the epitome of sensuality is sexuality. And I'm an old man but it's a, it's a driving force in all of our favorite moments in life. And even at 74, it remains volatile. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> now, you've got this exciting new record out, and it just dropped the other day. Uh, it's getting great reviews by uh, far many more people than just me. But to follow up with that, old school, you're going out on the road. You're taking the music out live. You got a two-month U.S. tour kicking off down here in Florida in July. What's that going to look like? What's what's Ted Nugent on stage 2022 with an ass-kicking little record? What What's, what's that going to look like? It can't be pretty. It's going to get ugly. You used the word dangerous a moment ago. I think, I think that sums it up. And let, let me tell you about the the various parameters of dangerous. Um, I am old. I'm, I'll be 74 this year. But I'm real healthy because I've taken good care of myself. I'm probably as healthy as any 74-year-old has ever been. Um, and But I'm a pragmatist. I'm a utilitarian. I... I adhere, I genuflect the altar of the greatest philosopher ever, Dirty Harry, when he said a good man needs to know his limitations. So we're about to get on stage in Panama City Beach, Florida last Friday, and uh, we didn't need to rehearse much. We basically got together and just unleashed our songs, Jason, Greg, and I, like we, like we never missed a day since the last gig in August 2019. Because they play every day, I play every day, those songs are part of our pulse. My songs are the heartbeat of the band, and we played them like we had played them every night since. Well, I'm a a wise man uh, in my best moments, and as I'm about to go on stage, and I'm not as limber, I'm not going to be jumping off amplifiers or swinging on ropes, I'm not going to wear a loincloth, I have mercy on people's eyeballs, Um, but I I was contemplating, all right, what can I do? Because I hadn't done a gig since August 2019. I, I do a bunch of jam sessions and speakeasies and, and, and one-off corporate stuff. Um, well, when I got up there, Christopher, it, it was as good as any gig I've ever done. And you know that every gig, 6,768 rockouts, that's 6,768, I've counted them. All the jams at NAM, all the times I've got on stage with other bands, the sock hops, the pool parties, the graduations, the basement gigs, I, 6,768. Christopher, thank God Almighty, I got up there and it was as good as every gig I've ever done. I, The adrenaline owned my soul. I danced like a, uh, like a Motown funk brother in heat. Jason and Greg and I were as tight as ever, which is incredibly tight. It's right up there with James Brown and the Famous Flames. And the music had a life of its own. So this year, if anybody wants to see what the most energized, flame-throwing young rock and rollers have ever been capable of, I will give it to you in 2022. Every night, every song, guaranteed. A non-musical question. Sure. Can dudes get pregnant? I can promise you that is a negative. I can promise you that regardless of what the liars and the haters and the scammers and the Marxists and the U.S. government and the media and the fact checkers and even my friend Bruce Jenner, no matter what they say, there is only two genders. 
You can play with them all you want, and to each his own, but if you're a man, you're a man. And if you're a woman, you're a woman. And if you have some uh, maligned, misadjusted, wrongly placed plumbing, we pray for you, and you can fantasize all you want, and you can dress how you want, but you if you're a man, you can't destroy women's athletic records. You are a horrible, horrible human being, and anybody that supports a man destroying women's athletic records is rotten to the core. Case fucking closed. And I can print that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. But they, you know, I know Bruce Jenner. I, I raced against him. Superman. I mean, literally, Superman. He's like in the category of a Bruce Lee. Um, I, I get to train with Delta Force and Navy SEALs and Army Rangers and Green Berets. I, I, I get to hang out, hunt, and have campfires and marksmanship fun with Superman. Bruce Jenner was right up there with the epitome of the Bruce Lee commando warrior Superman. <laughs> then he has a psychological dilemma. Is his and his alone to choose. And if he wants to dress like a lady and claim to be a lady, I still love him. I pray for him. And I would never interfere with his fantasy unless he dared to compete against a female. And even he knows that it would be immoral to do so. Mm. So, God bless him and anybody else who's confused, but there's only two genders, and it, it, it's just an atrocity. It's, it's an obscenity to believe or think otherwise. Ted Nugent, thank you so much. For God bless, Godspeed. Uh, keep your energy and your spirit uh, very, very positive. We're going to get through this horrible attack on America by Uncle Sam. We're going to kick his ass into a foaming puddle of snot and hair real soon here when we get a legal election and the good Americans' votes are counted. Be strong. Raise hell. Be sure you communicate with your mayor, your senator, your congressman, your governor. In fact, insert in this interview and in your life, HunterNation.org. HunterNation.org. It's about galvanizing and uniting conservative Americans to vote like they mean it and demand legal votes only. HunterNation.org. We're really making a difference. We did it in Virginia. Uh, we did it last night in Ohio uh, with J.D. Vance. We did it in 2016. Um, so we can do this if we get cracked. So God bless you, Chris. All right. Thank you for your time, my friend. And that puts the wraps on another action-packed edition of Conversations. Much thanks to Ted Nugent for stopping by. Mad props to my producer, Liam Cannon, who puts the show together at Janus Studios in Palm Bay, Florida. Find more of my interviews, reviews, and features online at v13.net. You can also follow me on the Twitter at AuthorLong. Once again, thanks for listening to Conversations.